so what is being expressed is like the great unlearning, the great unbecoming of what you think you are. It's like an accident stumbling upon this infiniteness, this very, very now. Although there's really no now, the infinite here, right here at this very moment. In the quiet recesses of this isness, amidst the ebb and flow of apparent life's relentless currents, there lies an enigma, a curious amalgamation of all that have been, all that have been seen, and all that have been felt. This enigma, this elusive I, me, no me, self, no self, individual character, or whatever you might want to call it, is but a confluence of seeming past experiences, seemingly intricately thread together as this, with apparent conditioning or programming. Yet in its very essence, it is a paradox, a source of both comfort and torment. <laughs> and everything that is being expressed is nothing but a story about this apparent enigma. For when the dawn of what is breaks to simply what is upon the illusory perception, it brings with it like a torrent of pain, like the curse of the glimpse or the desire to glimpse what is, seemingly a pain born out of shattered illusions and crumbling facades. It is a pain that cuts deep, slicing through the layers of falsehood that have been meticulously crafted around the illusion of the individual. It is the agony of remorse, perhaps the fear of missing out, the anguish of realization, the price that is paid for glimpsing the raw isness that lies beneath the veneer of this illusory apparent existence. There could be a rejection. There could be an acceptance of what seemingly seen as just the absence of everything that is known, the disappearance of belief systems, or it could be a struggle in trying to comprehend what cannot be comprehended. The uh, curse of the glimpse, so to speak, is like a stab or could be relieving that there's nothing to get. But what seems to appear is this, this storm amidst the wreckage of the shattered illusions, there is an open invitation to pause in this wild openness. This wild openness without a sound, without a knowledge, without any kind of comprehension. It's just simply what is. Shattering through the illusion of separation, bound by imaginary bodies, the thoughts dancing in and out through the made-up mind, the emotions swirling to see through without a thought, without anything at all, without any kind of remembrance the colors, the textures, the sounds, the isness, even what is not seen to be comprehended is just what is. The presentness, the aliveness in this very moment anchored in the here and the now. Although there's no here and there's no now, words seemingly become transparently empty, labels of what can never be branded. Even the weight of centuries of inquiry evaporates into thin air. When confronting the profound question, who is this I that watches? What is this me that seems to be contracted? What observes that what bears witness? The enfolding drama of this very life. Since there is no observer or witness other than a thought or an idea, the simple Directness is looking at it. What is looking at what is is also what is. This is seeing this. This simple directness, 
this very moment that cannot be um, divided. Seemingly, there is a pang of, 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 um, of wanting to capture this, wanting to hold on to this, wanting to name it, wanting to label it. It could be called the dropping away of a me. It could be a shift in perception. But the dilemma is, in this enigma, there's no I that can capture it. There's no me that needs to drop. There's no you that witnesses it. There's no individual that gets realized. There's no self that becomes a no self. It's just what is. It's just simply what is. And there's nothing that can be comprehended. So what's being talked about here in this next series of talks is like an unlearning of what seems to be the obstacle of seeing what truly is without a second, without a two. It's the dropping away of all of the belief systems that seems to capture what can never be captured. It's the demolition of all of the knowledge that seems to create this falsity. It's the seeing through the memories as something that is a false remembrance of what can never be remembered. It's a seeing through that that very glimpse or the desire for glimpse is also it. And there's no other it except only it. And what seems to appear is just this wildness, this intricate appearance of something that does not have a second. It's like a perpetual cycle of emergence and dissolution. It's the unbecoming is the perpetual cycle of something that cannot be figured out, something that cannot be held. So this talks might come as a breeze, an easy walk in the park with the rain gently falling. Everything seems to appear as this infiniteness, perpetually new and fresh, or it could be a battle <laughs> against the storm of trying to figure out something that cannot be figured out. Or it could be just a longing to be outside, to sit in the rain. But no matter what is being said here, it does not really matter because what seems to appear is not a weather. It doesn't change. It does not move. It cannot be known. For simply it is already something that is blank, something that is, huh, <laughs> cannot be figured out. And yet, there is a longing to expect something that will happen, something that will occur, something that will be known, something that can be held, something that can be acknowledged. But acknowledging something that already is defeats the purpose of what already is. Figuring out something that cannot be figured out just simply goes back into that, that pain. Why can it not be me? Why does this not happen to me? When will it happen to me? In all sincerity, it has nothing to do with you. It has nothing to do with you. Because the very you that's longing for the absence of you is already it. But you cannot call it me or no me. You cannot call it anything at all because it's simply what it is. So again, in this wild, open directness, there is this peace and wavering despite all the chaos, despite all of the thoughts running through the apparent head. Despite all of the confusion or the doubt, it's always there. It's infinitely there. And in the next uh, couple of hours or the next few, few couple of days, it's going to be an unlearning of something that cannot be known. Although unlearning seems to require a two, it's the unlearning of the two.
is then learning of the very knowledge that got you here. That there's something that needs to happen, that there's something that will occur, that there's something that will drop, for it is already. It's the boom, it's the silence. It's the booming silence in everything. It's the isness in everything. There's no truth that can be said here, for it is already. There's nothing that needs to be understood, just simply it. So if you have any questions, please go ahead. And uh, I apologize for people that were locked out. Um, there was a wrong Zoom uh, thing, but hello. Cheers. Yeah, there's really nothing to fix. There's really nothing that's needed to be fixed or not fixed. It's just, it's always it. I hear a lot of people that, that seemingly goes through that pain of that, of that glimpse, right? Um, because it always wants to control and secure it. It always wants to get it. or the wanting to have a glimpse. Why do I always feel like I need to be fixed? Um, there's actually no you in that statement. That's the very essence of the illusion of something that is missing, which is also a part of everything. So when there's a longing to be fixed, the longing to be, to be, um, um, to be perfect, to, the longing to be corrected, it's just another thought that passes through. It's just another idea that seems to come and go. It just seems to, you know, if you want to go directly, it's just another label of something that cannot be labeled. So it can appear as something that needs to be fixed, but there's no you behind it. It comes and goes. It's like a, a rain that, that, appears and disappears. It's simply that's also it. It's just a narrative that keeps on going, that there's something. It's almost like when there is an engagement of, of an idea, then it becomes this narrative, this story of something that needs to happen, that something that needs to occur, something that needs to be fixed. It simply is already. Even the very longing, even the very wondering, even the questioning is also it. But what is being expressed is there's nothing behind it. There's no one behind anything. It's just a perpetual eye that keeps on appearing in and out. <laughs> The illusion that there's something that's needed. How do you see this fresh and new? No one actually sees this fresh and new. That's why it's always fresh and new. The moment that there is an I or a me or you that seems to see this as fresh and new, then it defeats the very essence of fresh and new. It's not about trying to see this as fresh and new. It's seeing this um, without you. It's just seeing, basically. Seeing without words, seeing without thoughts, it's just whatever it is.
But what creates these illusions that something is needed? Another illusion, another thought. It's trying to figure out the mystery is just another mystery. Trying to know is just another illusion. The very movement is illusory and what is completely still cannot be figured out. So it's all an appearance. Another question here. To what extent can this appear as a person with the life who needs to do things? Example, the need to do shadow work or whatever. I know it's everything, but I think it's a good discussion topic. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So there might be a need, you know, <laughs> like to, to do something, but it's just um, appearing as it. Again, it's just an easy sub subtraction, right? Although there's really nothing to subtract. The seeming illusion is that there's an eye that's always doing something. There's an eye that needs to do shadow work. It's, there's, there's an eye that needs to be corrected. There's a me that needs to drop. There's, uh, you know, the moment that it gets intercepted by that, by that idea that um, I am doing this. I need to do something. I need to improve myself is, um, is illusory. Although there is no one choosing to do it, it just appears as it is. For example, if you say that I am eating, it's just eating. I am singing, it's just singing. Um, and the illusion, that, that seeming flimsy, transparent illusion that, that it has something to do with me creates this um, duality, creates this idea that there is um, a you, which is also just another idea. And there's nothing wrong or right about shadow work. Um, it's just what it is. And again, no one is choosing to do that or not do that. It's just simply what happens. Um, in the last, I think, couple of months ago, I talked about the, the illusion of free will, um, the illusion of doing, the illusion of not doing. So if everything is just appearing automatically and then thought comes and basically claims that I am trying to improve myself, there's nothing wrong or right about that. But there's no I behind it. It's just really, really quite simple. Um, but the simplicity sometimes becomes a curse, right? Because it tries to figure out the simplicity when there's really nothing to figure out. Like imagine this, everything is just automatically happening. And there's a claiming that I am doing some stuff. I, it appears that I need to, you know, need things. It appears that I need to do this. It appears... It's just all an appearance. And everything seems to collapse into this emptiness that cannot be figured out. All of these seeming sand castles that are built upon collapses. Nothing really stays. But there's something that's always unmoving. Something that cannot be comprehended. Something that already is. Something that does not need to be fixed or not fixed. It's simply what is. So in this directness, right, it's, it's not going to help anyone. It's not going to help the problems. There's just going to be this peace that cannot be understood seemingly when the appearance of shadow or problems or pain that appears, and there's no one grasping it. It's just simply something that comes and goes. It's an illusion. And it's hard to hear that, right? When, <laughs> um, when the very essence of trying to listen to these talks is to um, el eliminate the pain. Pain still appears, but there's no suffering that happens anymore. It's not personal. It's just an appearance. Not as an understanding, as an appearance, but as something that just comes and goes. Hi, Emerson, there is no time, and it seems like there is a long glimpse and not necessarily about how it feels, but still in and out. It, it, is that just thinking? Not even thinking, it's just what is. There are really no thoughts. There are really no anything. There's not even nothing. It's just simply what is that's undivided that seemingly comes and goes. Because if you look at a thought, 
it's just another thought, meaning that it's incomprehensible. But everything that seems to appear seems to appear as a thought, sensations, feelings. And then there's labeling as coming and going. There's labeling as a glimpse. There's labeling as something that's not it. When the labels are off, it's just simply this wild openness. And everything seems to just unravel. It's like every seeming um, idea becomes this perception that you are perceiving it. But when the label comes off of the perceiver and the perceived, then no one knows what it is even. When the seeming labels of thoughts, you know, like we label thoughts of thoughts, seems to just vanish, then what is it even? So this in and out of thoughts is it? Yes. Okay. So it's hard to explain them. <laughs> I'm going to explain it, right? <laughs> I can't really explain it, but here it is, right? So there is this, this wild, you know, um, you know, it's, it's, it's this wild freedom that seems to be not moving because it's freedom. It seems to come and go, but it's not coming and going. So there is this stillness. And then there's this movement. So stillness and movement appearing in and out, me, no me, um, contraction, openness, but it's not um, solid because it's also moving. So there's this, it, it's so hard to explain because the only, the way that um, a perceiver thinks that there's a subject and object, there is a knowing. Um, but if all of the knowing drops, right? All of the, learning drops, then it's kind of like seeing this through such innocence that you don't know what it is. But the seeming contradiction is that there is an I that wants to know what this wonder is, right? What's this movement? And yet it's not moving and it cannot be comprehended by the, the character, the individual only wants to understand it, but it's not about understanding it. It's, it's, it's wild. It, it's, it's unimaginable. It's unfathomable. It's, it's, it's just this. And in this kind of like thing, you know, what, when, what people can call it, you know, some people in the apparent um, more kind of like, you know, um, Advaita, non-duality, will call it like pure consciousness, right? Which is just another label. And then, you know what, and and um, so when people think that it's pure consciousness, then they try to eliminate the thought in some of the practices and everything, right? Because they just want to experience this stillness. But the very wanting to experience the stillness is another movement, isn't it? Or trying to be still is just another movement. So it has nothing to do with the movement. But it's also the movement. It doesn't make sense. It's, it's, it's kind of like... Which one is it? What is it? How can this be? So the very one is questioning it has nothing to do with what is, right? But it's also appearing as what is. So it's so, confu it's so confusing that, that um, it, the, the apparent you know, seeker wants to figure it out, wants to know what cannot be known. It's almost like this impersonal embrace that nothing will be able to be figured out. It's a complete surrender that there's no one that can figure it out. But there's this illusion, there's this persistent nagging feeling that I will get it. Or the me will not get it, you know, and it just keeps on going back and forth, going back and forth, right? But it has nothing to do with, with the mental activity. Because without the mental activity, it's just sensations, feelings, appearances. And then we're quick to label it as it or not it. There's really no it. There's really no not it. They're just words, right? They're just seeming trying to comprehend something that is always it. So yeah, it even has nothing to do with thoughts. It has nothing to do with even energy because that's just thought. Nothing to do with anything that you can think of. And that's the clarity without words. 
it's easy to go into a rabbit hole of ideas. It's, goes, it's easy to go into a rabbit hole of belief systems. And then we seem to position ourselves in our belief on what others seem to say. So don't believe in what I say. Don't believe in anyone that has to say about anything about this. And that's the conundrum, right? Because who's telling the truth? No one is. The truth cannot be told. And it's hard to admit that sometimes. Because the very wanting to listen to this, you want someone that knows this. But when someone proclaims that they know this, then it just becomes someone's idea about this. And that's the, and that's the wow, right? <laughs> that's a collect. No way. <laughs> it can't be figured out. And I know this is a, a long meeting and everything with three sessions, but I'm, I'm going to say it. It's, it's every, every conversation is a moot point in trying to express what this is. So this is just an over kind of like a exaggeration of something that cannot be something that cannot be expressed really. But, um, but there's this lightness, right? There's this, you know, like when the shoulders relax, when there's a relaxation that, um, okay, you know what? I've tried everything. I've listened to everyone. Um, I believed in here. I was in this spirituality and I was in non-duality. And now I'm just at a loss. I've tried channeling. <laughs> I tried energy work, everything that you can think of, right? You know what I'm saying? It all boils, boils down to this. No one knows. And, and that's a relief. Because there's no next teacher, no next speaker, no next whatever. Even the speaker doesn't matter, right? There's no hierarchy. There's no pedestals. There's no boss. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> there's no leader. There's nothing. You know, it's just, it's just, it's just this emptiness that cannot be figured out. Although there is no one to figure out or to be at peace with it, the moment that there is a peaceness of what cannot be figured out, then it's over. But there's still going to be this, maybe there's a longing for the next best coffee or <laughs> it never ends. Or, you know what, or what's the next great song? You know, it's just, but all of these kind of like seeming comings and goings in and out, kind of like what you're saying there, Bolivar, is also it. The, just the neurosis of trying to figure out non-duality becomes a relaxation because there's really no non-duality. It's just another idea. It's just another. The moment that the word comes out and then labels it, it's just another learning. So in this great unlearning, everything that seems to be, you know, um, held on to dear, like my precious, you know what I'm saying, is a seeming surrender of everything that is known. I used to hold on to things like, like I value them. I held on to ideas and belief systems. I talked, to, I talked about this in a different meeting. It's kind of like being a hoarder. Have you seen that TV show, The Hoarder? You know, like it's just hoarding, 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 hoarding. So um, um, at one point I was hoarding um, consciousness, awareness. And then I was hoarding um, no consciousness, no awareness. It's the same thing. Any idea is the same thing. It's just basically irrelevant ideas of something that cannot be put into an idea. It's like being a child. <laughs> it's, it's like, it's just, everything's not serious anymore. Even when it's serious, it's not serious anymore.
the female worker Catholic has difficulty with no one being in charge, still a sense of a leader. Yeah, of course. You know what? There's always going to be a difficulty when there is a seeming learning that there needs to be an authority. When there's a seeming programming that there needs to be someone that's got it or, or someone that, that, that knows this, right? So what's being presented here is that um, when um, no one is in charge, it's play. It's just what is. It's just very simple. It's just very um, easy, flowing, not serious. Was it ever serious? Was it ever not serious? It doesn't matter. <laughs> That's why there's usually a laughter with this, right? It's kind of like, oh, I've been duped. I duped. I thought. And there's just this, it's just walking, it's just drinking. You know, it's, it's like all of a sudden it's on holiday. It's so busy working to trying to figure this out that, but there's no work to be done, right? It's like a, it's like a retired person that keeps on going back to work and, <laughs> and keep on saying that it's retired. It's retirement. It is what it is. So the other meeting that I did a couple of days ago, they kept on talking about the nature of self, the truth, the um, <laughs> um, the um, the higher self, all that kind of stuff. All of that is just fantasy, fantasy, and seemingly, you know, the opposite of that is the no self, the no me, nothing. It's just another fantasy. It's all fantasy. Yes, truth is fantasy too, because who knows the truth, right? So to be able to have a truth, okay, let's just go to the opposites. I, lo I love this. It's kind of fun, right? Um, the, the character is just really, it's just can only survive in opposites, right? The me or the no me or whatever. It can only function seemingly or can only be um, seemingly real if there's an opposite. So when there's truth, there's no, there's not false, basic, true or false, but true or false truth is just another word. Let that sink in for a moment. It's just a word. And that's the truth. <laughs> <laughs> just joking. <laughs> it, yeah, it, 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 the more spiritual thing, they're looking for the truth, right? They're looking for something. But when the, let's just even say this, truth is, oh, is already looking at truth. But the truth is not the truth that does not have an opposite, something that cannot be subjective, something that cannot be um, have a another so we can play back and forth in words and everything so one of the thing that was quite difficult to comprehend is that the absence of truth because it's just a position it's just a uh, it's the biggest hoard right it's according to someone this is the truth it can never be verified It can never be proven. It's just subjective. So the moment that there is a position, like a belief or a truth, it's a learning. The truth is learned. The belief is learned. So the apparent unlearning or the unbecoming is the opposite of something that does not have an opposite. Meaning that it's just what is. Okay, gravity seems to be very true to me. But for people that don't know about gravity, they would not even know it. 
that's just another thing, right? That uh, is is something that is learned and everything. Um, it's just an appearance of something. You can just call it, it's just what is. For example, you know, like it, it was, it took centuries to figure out that the, um, the, uh, the earth is not the center of the universe. So for centuries in apparent history and everything, right? That was, that was something that was believed to be true. So truth is just a belief. There's an obviousness here that there is no me. But also it's just another appearance. I, I don't really know how to see it other than that, right? Because it's really hard to comprehend that. Um, but that might appear as a truth, but there's also no truth in that. The moment that we speak about it, you know what I'm saying, becomes subjective. Go ahead, Steve. Hi, Steve. Hi, Emerson. Hello. Hi. Hello. Um, I think this idea of truth versus untruth. Yeah is a necessity for any type of structure, whether it's government, judicial system, yes, philosophy, formal logic requires yes. that there be a truth or falsity to any statement that gets made. Of course. So. In the story, that's true. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so so but it's still a story right right yeah. <laughs> so, the, so the difficulty is that it's as though nothing can make sense yes unless you can assign yes a truth value to it of course of course of course and the investment in a story is that right yes so for in a story to happen there has to be a true story and a, an untrue story but all it's still a story. You see what sure. I'm getting at here? It's the same. Absolutely. Yeah, it's sure. the same. So for example, for a ju judicial system, there has to be truth. You know what I'm saying? For it to work. But yeah, if you, you look at... Know, you have to know the witnesses. Exactly. Are truthful or untruthful. Yeah. It's, it's like, you know what, in a, in a storybook, right? There's going to be true and untruths. But, yeah. but they're the same story. And that's really the enigma, you know what I'm saying? That's the mystery, is that this and not this is the same. And it, we can't seem to figure it out, right? Because trying to figure it out, you know, positions oneself in, well, I think that this is true. Then it goes into the trap again, right? It's, it's like hoarding the truth again of what you think is true. And then later on, you know what I'm saying? Perhaps, you know what I'm saying? After after several kind of like, um, you know, challenging the truth and everything, then you think that the truth, what you think is true is untrue now. Then you have another truth. Right. You know what I'm talking about? So it, 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 the identity, the character, the me hides behind what it thinks it believes. And, and the other problem is <laughs> yeah. a lot of, it doesn't make sense. It's not logical. You know what I'm saying? It's not logical at all. A lot of these movements are structured as a search for truth. Yes, that's right. Yeah. And that's, and that's the dilemma, right? Is because the search for truth, when, when it's finally seen the truth and untruth is just illusion, then the whole structure of seeking collapses. Right, right. Has but as long as you're invested in truth, the seeking will go on. The, 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 as, as soon as you're invested in, in, um, in figuring out what cannot be figured out, you're in a loop, you know what I'm saying, of, of truth and untruth, truth and untruth. And it's going to be who's telling the truth and who's not telling the truth. It doesn't matter. Right. Yeah. It's because also it's just... assumed in many of these structures that that's what is being sought. Yes. That's what's being See, talked about. Exactly. And, and that's, that's the thing, right? So if you look at, okay, like, let's look at this construct again, right? And it's quite, quite brilliant. It's quite stunning, actually. Um, because when you believe in one, then you disbelieve in another. There's a you involved there. 
Yeah. Right? When you put down one, then you believe in another, there's still a you there that, you know what I'm saying? So what's being expressed is the dissolution of the opposites and seeing it through from a wider lens and saying that, oh, shoot, I've been duped again. But when it's seen that both positions, true or untrue, is just positions, or when you see that true or untrue is just, just stories, even if you see position, no position is a story. It's a position. Truth or untruth is it's just a story. I like that story. I like that story too. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. What is the state of samadhi? See, that's the thing, right? So, <laughs> so, <laughs> so a state or no state is a story. Samadhi or no samadhi is a story. Enlightenment, no enlightenment is a story. Me or no me is a story. So when it's seen through this clear clarity without any sides basically right then it's seen as whole and complete you're like okay wholeness includes this and that something missing is a part of everything it's also that that's it too and it can appear as a samadhi you know what i'm saying um and it can also appear as not samadhi But if you look at it, at it, it does not it, it, it does not require an I or a me. Thank you, Woodley. Woodley goes. It can appear as somebody. Yes. Could you please clarify the term having no center, no location? I mean, I am here right now and not out there in the universe everywhere. <laughs> Again, so when there is another kind of like you know landing, right? Like you know that there's no center, and someone will say. Oh, I feel centered in everything. Both are just illusions. It's not being centerless or no location, although that's clearer than saying that I am here. I am centered. But the opposite of that here, there's, there's no center. There's no location. It's just both illusory as well. But if you, again, this is going to get so contradictory, right? But if the you is out of the picture, there is no center. There's no location. It's just what is. Seemingly appearing as everything. Another question. Aha. I got it. <laughs> Perfect. Even if you don't get it, it's still aha an aha. Emerson. Oh, hello. Hi. Oh, hi, Boulevard. I, <laughs> I finally decided to talk. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that listening to many different teachers, it's not helping at all because they use different terms and we we cling to the <laughs> terms used by one and then the other. And uh I don't I don't think I recommend it. Yeah, you know what? It, it, and that's also it, you know what I'm saying? Speaking yeah. in different terms and languages. Um, there's a seeming kind of like, a, you know, kind of like putting everything here and shredding it. Because it's easy to get caught up in what someone says, right? And it becomes a secondhand knowledge now. It's not direct, isn't it? It's not direct, thank you. It yeah. becomes something that is passed on according to my guru, you know, according to this. And that's what I did. Basically, I just had secondhand knowledge over and over and over again. But in this directness, right, it's, 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 you don't need a speaker or a teacher to see this, right? Because it is already. And, and the moment that you believe that someone is saying is true, 
then you make your experience false. The moment that you get caught up in the um, in the rabbit hole of of seeking, and then you are looking, you know, putting someone on a pedestal that has ended their seeking, then you're applying their labels to you, although it cannot be labeled, right? It's just what is. Even me saying what is is just insignificant. It's irrelevant because that's just another label, right? So all of the teachers and speakers and sages and non-sages are the same as the birds chirping. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Emerson. I like the way that you express this as pain. Um, yeah, the you know what the uh, the pain of 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 glimpsing or wanting to have a glimpse, right? Is because it's it's kind of like that that the the pain is very it because there's there's this longing to figure out. You know, when there's a glimpse of what cannot be figured out, then it tries to, um, you know, tries to to pierce through that illusion. And it also means that everything that you know, everything that you think, everything that you hold on to is challenged. And it's quite painful um, to to go through that seemingly because, you know, here you are doing la la la, you know, saying all of a sudden you're like, everything that I thought about is not true. So I have have to look for the truth now. See how, (laughs) how that gets really, really tricky, right? It's like, what? All of the religion, you know, and it becomes spirituality and then also becomes non-duality, becomes something that you think that you know. And then when someone's suggesting that there is no, no one that can figure it out, then you try to figure it out. Hi, Woodley. Hello. Hey, what's up? What's up? Not, not much. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, all right. So in, in one of our conversations that we had recently, you, you mentioned that you can, you can see this yeah, and then still the apparent character can take, have a process. Of to, course. To, yeah. Yeah. To, 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 I wonder if you could talk a little bit more about that. Yeah. Cause that's, it's, cause that's, that's like the apparent, the confusion, so to speak. Yeah. Again, you know what I'm saying? This is uh, a non-happening happening, so to speak. Right. It's like an unraveling, but there's nothing to unravel. It's an unlearning but there's nothing that was learned really. You just think that you are processing through this, um, but there's really no you involved in it. So it's just processing happening, right? It's kind of like um, some, some, I love that I was talking to someone for a long time and, and, and the person said, I have nothing to, um, to learn from you anymore because all that I keep on, Clashing through is unlearning, basically. Everything that I think I know just gets dissolved, right? So even the seeming kind of like coming and going, you know, like the me or being, thoughts coming in and out is already it. So even someone is saying that I'm gradually falling apart or someone that has this instant kind of like, it's the same fantasy. So it's 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 brilliant in a way, right? Because you think that you don't get you don't be, or you think that will never happen to you. Um, but when it finally happens, there's no you. And that's the and that's the kind of like what? The what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, it's 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 like it's like uh like watching a movie basically yeah. <laughs> or something. Yeah. Although, although not even, <laughs> not even that. Yeah. And, and that's what's, <laughs> what's so shocking about it. Right. Is is like, it's like this, it, 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 nothing prepares you for this really. And it's also very ordinary at the same time. Right. So it's already kind of like, it's, it's just what is it's like, it's, it's, it's like 
trying to to see um, something that is already seen. Yeah, it's not yeah. gonna happen. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. It already is, or and it it's is. just simple. It already is. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. And what seems to happen, you know, what in these meetings is, even if I repeat, it's already is like you know, ad infinitum, right? It 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 tries to kind of like what is already it. The moment that it becomes an inquiry. It's it's perfect. It's perfect, right? Because sometimes that could can clash and everything, everything, right? Um, kind of like what I was saying earlier that oh, there's no one inquiring. There's really no witness. There's really no observer, and we get caught up in the observer or the witness. And if you look at it, it's just observer, no observer. Then it's just openness, basically. Oh, sorry. Hang on for a moment. My batteries, I have a new camera, so I, I don't know how to do this. Hang on for a moment. Okay, I'm just going to pause for a moment. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm just going to plug before it runs out. Can you guys hear me? Sorry, my camera's going to come on soon. <laughs> okay, there we go. Woo. Thank you. Question here. Um, the analogy of a dream is often used. I'm, I'm actually dreaming now. I wonder. Sorry, I often held back questions thinking that it's useless to do so, but I decided this weekend I will not. Hooray. Um, it cannot really be known, but it's seemingly there is a dream likeness, meaning that there's no dreamer, but it's a dream. We can't really call it an illusion dreamer. We can't call it anything. But the closest is that it's almost like real and unreal simultaneously, like a dream, um, like a um, 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 a fantasy, but it feels absolutely real. Kind of like when you're dreaming at night. Um, it feels it's a felt sense of a dream. There's a belief system there. There's seemingly whatever happens. But the moment that the character wakes up, all of the dream completely vanishes. What's not noticed is that similarly, 
what seems to appear in this daydreaming or this, this you know, waking is the same thing. What seems to appear absolutely feels real, but it's also not. So even all of our senses, our perceptions, all of our um, um, sensations and feelings are also illusory. Because the one that's perceiving the illusion is a dream. Meaning that it's all a dream, but there's no you in the dream. And it's hard to comprehend that, right? Because even our thinking is a dream. Feelings are a dream. And that's just using a word that seems to try to make sense of something that does not make sense. It's, it's really incomprehensible of how this is happening. Um, you know, people would, would assume that there is something to wake up from. Something that can be realized or recognized, right? But the very recognizing can also be a dream. The very realizing can also be a dream. That's why when there's a glimpse that happens, it's a curse. It's the pain of, of thinking that you've figured out something or thinking that you've woken up only to see that you're, you know, that, that it just happened. Meaning that it, it, it becomes a curse <laughs> because there's a like. I want that glimpse back. I want that feeling of emptiness and everything. But that also becomes just another dream. So when, when there is just this, no matter what seems to appear, and it, has, it does not really include you, then it's seen as, as it. Not by you, but just it. Then everything becomes whole. Does that make any sense? It, it, it's hard to make sense of it. Um, kind of like when you're dreaming at night and then all of a sudden, you know what? You, you, could be, um, you could have won the jackpot and everything and you wake up completely broke. <laughs> or, <laughs> or thinking that you've lost everything and then you wake up that you lost really nothing. Or having a, a dream that you glimpsed and everything, and then you wake up, you're like, oh, I lost that glimpse. It's all a dream. So opposites are a dream. That's what it is. It's just so it's it's so simple, right? It's but but um the character always try to say what's so simple about it. Then it com complicates something that does not have an opposite because the opposite is reinforcing its opposition by trying to figure out something that does not have any opposites. Or it's kind of like going back into your nighttime dream and trying to figure out everything that happened there. It's pointless because it never really happened. And that's the, and that's the, um, and that's the, um, the trap. The trap is to think that there's something that will wake up. The trap is to think that something will drop away. The trap is to think that there is a next. So there's this infinite now, you know what I'm saying? Or I don't even want to call it now. There's this infinite that's direct. But there's always a longing for the next. So it overlooks this immediacy it overlooks this directness because it's always avoiding what's direct so what's direct could appear as pain it could appear as longing it could appear as desire it could appear as hunger but the hunger the pain the longing the bliss the peace the awakening non-awakening the me the no me is always it so that's what's incomprehensible you're like well I want what he's having and everything, right? So when it's seen that there's just no more seriousness about it, it's just like, oh, okay. <laughs> that's also it. Oh, wow. That's also it. Then nothing really sticks anymore. Nothing really kind of like holds on to anymore because there's no one holding it, right? That's simple. That's simple. The assumption there's something to wake up from is separation of subject and object. Yes. The very assumption is separation 
the very um you know the assumption that there's something that needs to be figured out is very subject and object very real and unreal right truth and untruth it, it's it's trying to figure out something and it will just keep on going back and forth to polarity to the opposites but when it seemed that there's really no polarity there's really no opposite which is incomprehensible then it sees it from a wide spectrum of nothingness basically like oh, okay it's all nothing even if it feels like everything it's wild it's wild by definition what's next is not this um it's just an appearance as well yeah so the very appearance of this you know kind of like it's always this it's always this even the thinking that there is a next is also this see how tricky it is it's not this but it's also this meaning it doesn't have any opposite so even when you think it's not it it's it when you think it's it's it it's not it <laughs> and that's why there's a seeming you know goose like a wild goose chase of some the it you know what i'm saying but the it is chasing the it and even the chasing is it <laughs> so how do you know this truth the thing is right the thing is in my search for truth when when it was seen that there's no truth seeker then there's no th truth to be sought when it's seen that you know not not seeing as an opposite when it's seen that truth and untrue is just fantasy then it sees the whole thing as fantasy when it's seen that true story and you know false story is just stories then it sees the whole thing as a story so what's seeing is a story, what's being seen is a story. So I don't take myself seriously anymore. <laughs> that's, very, yeah. that's, that's what becomes really, really clear, right? Because when, when the character was caught up in its seriousness before, then um, I thought that I had the truth and I would lose the truth. I'm like well somebody must have someone someone must have the truth right so it goes in you know, chasing and like do you have the truth and usually you know what i'm saying and in, in, in seeking and everything it, it's you get really really convinced that someone has the truth but if someone has the truth then there's a me there there's an individual there there's a character there and they will say their truths you know what i'm saying and if you look at it, it's just a fantasy. It's just complete fantasy. It's wild. Um, so when it's seen that, there's just a lot of, um, it's, it's almost like a wild joke, right? It's like, oh, I can't believe this stuff, right? It's just, it's just become so, so free and, and just so um, unencumbered and it, it's not trapped anymore. It's just, it's interconnected, although there's nothing connected. Um, then everything just becomes this play of opposites, this ping-ponging of reality and not reality. So there's no more reality, really. Reality is fantasy. Fantasy is reality. True is false. False is true. There's no you is you. You is there's no you. This is not this and this is, you know what I'm saying? It just, it just becomes irrelevant. And that's the key, that there's no key. <laughs> so it's just a whole bunch of juggling with words, right? Of something that cannot be put up in words. So everything is just up in the air. Yeah. 
do you still get sad? Sadness happens, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's a, um, yeah. But sadness appears not for anyone in particular anymore, right? And it's full on sadness. It's like, let's go back into that, that someone had asked question about a dream, right? So when you're dreaming, um, um, there is sadness, you know, like you could dream of someone dying and you wake up crying your eyes out, right? But the moment that you wake up, what you thought was true is not true. Then there's an easiness to it. So that's what's being said here is that there's sadness, but it's also um, there's no sadness at the same time it's hard to explain it's just an appearance but it's full on it's kind of like being awake and also asleep simultaneously but there's no one awake and there's no one asleep it sees the opposite right as just an illusion as a dream Do you still fall in love every morning, every moment? <laughs> yeah, there's no you. It's just love coming in and out so seemingly, but there's also a love that's completely still. So yeah, just it's just a play. It's just a play. Falling in love, falling out of love is just love. So the opposite appears now, even if it refers to something not now. Bingo, yeah. Bingo, the opposite appears now, although there is no now. What about the fear of public speaking? How do you address it from this point of view? It's just what is. There's always going to be a play, right? There's always going to be a lack. Um, the seeming problem here is that this character likes to eat. Gluttony, basically. <laughs> so it likes buffet, you know what I'm saying? All you can eat. Seemingly for another character, that might be a problem. For here, it's just what is. <laughs> so when it's seen that, you know, it's just what's, this is even saying, naturally appearing as it. Then there's really no problem is in it, right? It's just what is. And that's just even just something that you think, you know, saying. But the you that thinks it is illusory. So even that thought is an illusion. I've always said this, you know, like um, for quite a while when I was with Nothing Needed, I'm not going to be a speaker. I'm not going to, you know, I don't have any interest whatsoever. <laughs> but I don't know what, you know, it's just, it's just no one's choosing to do it. So it's basically, it's, it's just, it's just it. That's also it. And you'll be surprised, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes there's nothing that's fixed, really. You'll be surprised, you know, like, I, you know, like there's a new channel by Boulevard. <laughs> or not, you know. <laughs>
I get what you're saying, Emerson, but how come the self or the me feels heavy here? Um, it's just simple, right? It's just really, really simple. It's simply seeing through that appearance, seemingly without any judgment or condemnation, is just what is. It's like that self doubt doubt crashes, you know, um, back and forth like waves. There's also going to be currents of self love, and sometimes self loathing collides. <laughs> there's a heavy me. There's no me. It's just all intertwined, right? It's just coming and going. Sometimes there's a feeling of self love. Sometimes there's a feeling of self awareness, and then when there's no no noticing that there's no self, then it's just what is. It's just a feeling that comes and goes, but there's nothing wrong with it. It's not about being a zombie and saying there's no self here. It's just what is. There's also no self, but there's no me already. It's just appearing as, you know, whatever seems to occur. So trying to change or control what is, is simply to um, see through that there's no one controlling it. It's just another appearance, right? So what I'm basically saying to, to make a cut, cut a long story short is that even that sense of self is it. But there's also no self, it's just a sense. It doesn't matter, basically, right? It's just what it is. It just appears as a me or no me. It appears as coming and going. Um, but it's just really labeling, right? If you look at a toddler, it's not going to say that, oh, the me is really strong here today. No. <laughs> but it still goes into tantrums. And it goes into, you know, they just don't call it anything. And they giggle like innocent little bunnies and everything, right? Um, it doesn't matter. Again, the learning that there is a me or a self or a true nature or consciousness or all of that kind of stuff, right? It's just labeling of something that cannot be labeled that appears from a toddler as just, you know, tantrums and, and you know, bursts of laughter, giggle, you know, all that kind of stuff. It's all innocence at play. If the fear appears now and then disappears now, what's wrong or right about it? Exactly, yeah. It just appears, disappears. Again, kind of like what I was trying to say earlier, right? In this stillness, there's a dynamic movement that comes and goes. It's not separate from stillness. In this peace, there's chaos that comes and goes, but it's not separate from peace. In what is, there's going to appear as what is not, but it's also what is. So it's never, ever separate from whatever it is. And seemingly, the character gets caught up in the idea of positions. Because if there's no position, then there's no character. If there's no opposite, then there's no me. If there's no truth, then there's no self. Hey, Woodley. <laughs> hey, I hope hey. I'm not talking too much in the chat. No, no, um, no, please. You're not, you're not even doing it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's just what's appearing. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, what was I going to ask? What was going to? Oh, okay. Here it is. It's appearing now. Um, I wonder if you could speak to the the relation, the interrelatedness between like time, thoughts, and like the the sense of self. Oh yeah, yeah. And, it's, and, it's and half you pull any of them out, that like it falls apart. Oh yeah, totally. It's a really, it's a really, you know, it's a house of cards, right? You know, when you put a heart, house of cards together. If you pull one out, everything crumbles. Like, for example, this the, the me, right? If you pull out the card of the me or the self or the no me or whatever, then there's no time because the time is conceived by the me. There is no, um, the illusion completely crumbles. 
if you take take out the the card of time, the illusion of time, then there's no me that was ever born or me that will ever die. So there's really no me. If you take out what's the other one, the thought. Thoughts. Yeah. yeah. So well, if you take yeah. out the card of thoughts, then um, a me is just a thought, you know, and and a uh, no me is just another thought, and there um, a time is just a thought. If you take out the thought, then it's just it all collapses because they it cannot, you know, all of these illusions seemingly is just a singularity um, appearing as multiplicity or duality, basically, right? So it's just a singular appearance of something that cannot be figured out. It's the enigma, right? You know, it's the mystery. It's the paradox. But the funny thing is, okay, like check this out. The paradox is that there's no paradox. The mystery is that there's really no mystery. Yeah, I was I was about to say, you say it appears as a duality, but it doesn't. It doesn't, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's so interesting. It's so interesting. <laughs> and that's and that's why there's just this, it's kind of like it's just this stunning ordinary appearance of something that is beyond ordinary it's 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 glorious right it, it's humble you can use all the adjectives seemingly right but again we're just trying to label something that cannot be labeled because it can appear as ugly you know saying so like it, it, could, it could appear as the good the bad and the ugly but the good the bad and the ugly is just the same um you know it's just labeling something that's not separate even if you look at the, uh, you know what, and this is just kind of what really funny, right? If duality, for example, right? There's this interconnectedness. Without the good, there's no bad. Without the bad, there's no good. But there's no good and bad at the same time. Without the, without the right, there's no left. You know what I'm saying? Without the left, there's no right, but left and right are the same thing. Yeah, that makes it's sense. It's interconnected, but they're also illusory. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm tempted to say... <clears throat> I understand that yeah. it framed it more in terms of thoughts, like yeah. the good, like to say something as good as a thought. Yeah. So something as bad as a thought. Yeah. Both of them are thoughts. Both of them just come and go. Yeah. As, as quickly as that. Yeah. Yeah. And even if you look at, look at the word good, the word bad, they're both words. Just words. Exactly. Yeah. Just words, just markers of something that cannot be, you know, labeled. Right. So we're labeling the infinite as good or bad. We're seeing through the perception, the lens of you and I, subject, object, and everything. But it's just an illusion. The whole polarity, the whole duality, even the idea of non-duality presents that there's a duality. You see what I'm trying to say here? It, it doesn't matter what you think or not think. It's just an appearance. It's just a label. Now I know what I'm going to talk about in the next meeting, labels, right? Because it's, it's just so simple. It's, it's when everything gets unlabeled, then everything is just, oh, okay. I wrote a poem a long time ago called Thinky Thoughts Labeling the Unknown. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you, Woodley. Thanks. Hey, Emerson. Yes. <laughs> One more question. Um, of course. So sometimes I'm practicing and I'm like, I have no thoughts and I'm so happy. Like, hmm, I got this under control. And then suddenly <laughs> there are thoughts. And then I feel bad about it. I'm like, oh, shoot, I lost it. Now I'm thinking again. Yeah. So I should consider that just as part of the game. It is. It is, right? So holding on to, right, there's going to be days. It's going to be like, oh, wild and free and everything, right? Um, and then there's going to be that it's heavy and, and, and stormy and, and frustrating and everything. That's also it. Because yeah. without the polarity, then there's no experiencer. There's no experience, but there's really no experiencer at the same time. So it's just seemingly appearances of clarity and, you know, non-clarity, right? It's, yeah. it's just, it's, it's, it's wild, right? Because there's this seeming understanding that there's a permanent 
but permanent is just another idea. It's just another label of something. So you know, I, I have um, um, visited and talked to some monks, you know what I'm saying? And um, they're practicing and it's beautiful, you know what I'm saying? It's beautiful, you know, to, to live. But there's also characters that are going to be depressed by it. So some, some characters seem to like to practice. Some characters seem not to like to practice, right? But both are just illusory. Practicing or not practicing is just what is. But chasing something that already is, is suffering. Because, for example, when, when you have a day that is beautiful and clear and everything, and when you put a benchmark on it, meaning that every single day has to be like that, then, then um, you're, you're positioning, you know what I'm saying? Then there's a, a character that is holding on to that dream. It's like, for example, you dreamt last night that you won a jackpot and now a billionaire, right? You felt really, really great. And you're like, woohoo. Um, and then you, when you wake up, you're like, oh, I lost it. If you can keep on holding on to that dream, then you're going to suffer. Because you think that the dream was real. Or similarly, if you dream that you lost everything, when you wake up, nothing was really lost. But you're depressed. Do you think that you really lost? And it's almost like making the unreal real. So it misses the idea. It misses the point that there is nothing um, to grasp, really, because it's all a dream. It's all ephemeral. Thank you. Thank you. So do I just have to surrender that there are no opposites? So that's another trap. <laughs> then it becomes... <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I got trapped in that once too, right? You know what I'm saying? I'm like, okay, there are... You know, it, it's, it doesn't matter, right? It doesn't matter. It's not about understanding it or... Or um, you can say that there is an impersonal surrender, right? But because when it has something to do with you, then you think that you surrendered yourself. At the same time, reinforcing that there's a you that surrendered. It's almost like saying that, well, there is no me because I've surrendered to me. There is no me to surrender. So everything will come and go, no, um, and it has nothing to do with you, basically, right? So there's no use surrendering or accepting it. It just comes and goes. When it's seen that the simplicity that everything just comes and goes, and there's this seeming unmoving isness that can never be figured out. Um, so the coming and goings are just seen as coming and goings. Sometimes there's dancing around happy, and there's sometimes there's crying. You know, it's just what is. Oh, hello, Mark. Hey. Hello. Um, 
I like your headphones. Oh yeah, thanks. They're they're good. Uh, they're good. Uh, good sound as well. Yeah. Really good. Um, mm. I guess what what's I guess what's happening here is like happening. It's like this. I don't know this this uh, sense of I don't know like this this satisfaction or looking for you know something else something. It's always going to be like that. But there's what's 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 uh, what's being missed is that there's no one doing that. And like what I said All earlier, right. there's always going to be a seeking. There's seeking here for what's the next best restaurant to eat at, that kind of thing, right? <laughs> what's the next dance music to dance to? What's the next next best track, right? There's right. always going to be this seeming longing, but there's no one longing. But sometimes what happens in the seeking circles is that there's a neurotic seeking of something that already is. So there's a seeking of thinking that, you know what, there's something that I'm missing, but what's being missed is also imaginary. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, because it, it never... Well, what I'm trying to really... say is that's also it. Yeah, that's also it. Yeah. Yeah. It's like it's, it never really lands anywhere. In the no. It's not like it... You can say now I'm sort of here or whatever it's like yeah 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 there's this unmovingness right of regardless of what happens coming and going next or no next and everything here or no here it's just what is seeking or not seeking it doesn't really matter right listening or not listening it doesn't really matter right. longing or not longing it's the same it's the same um flip of the same coin basically but no one ever talks about you know what not not no one talks about but it's rarely mentioned when it's just contentment it's just mm. contentment yeah <clears throat> but but it just i mean some days it just drives you crazy it just, just drives me nuts because then i'm having thoughts of like like because I'm, I'm you're just, you're comparing it to myself. some days that it was clear, kind of like what I was saying earlier, right? Because there are some days that are like, "Hallelujah!" It's so you know it, this is it, but there's also going to be a day that's going to appear that this is not it. But even that this is not it, this is the same. It. It's the mm. same. You know, well, I I I can't help but compare it to the speakers because they they don't seem to be any confusion about what. Um, the confusion or no confusion, no, it's the no, same. No racism or... Yeah. Even confusion or no confusion is the same. It's just all appearances, right? If it's seen that everything is just an appearance, then the neurosis or the kind of like the 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 stickiness seemingly is just it's just it's just it becomes very um again, please don't compare because comparison is just another. <laughs> There are going to be days that there's going to be some some heaviness. There's going to be days there's going to be lightness. But that just creates hope for lightness. It seems like that, that I'm going to... Well, heaviness have... and lightness are the same. So hoping for lightness makes the heaviness your reality. But the heaviness is not reality. It's just something that's fleeting, that's moving. Right. It comes and goes, yeah. So trying to hold on into what kind of like I want what he's having kind of thing. I want that lightness and everything creates a yeah. comparison that you are going through heaviness or something. Mm -hmm. But that heaviness that seemingly is going on is also it. I have days of heaviness, you know, when I eat too much. <laughs> <laughs> Like last right. night. <laughs> right. But it's just, that's also it, right? That's also it. There's going to be longing. There's going to be desiring. There's going to be whatever seems to appear, right? But when, when it has nothing to do with you anymore, it's just a flow of what is and what isn't.
but going against the flow seemingly although there's no one going against the flow is is it's like swimming upstream um of what is already it's just coming and going mm. yeah but it's like it seems to place in, an importance in in it or you know that's your belief I don't know. so yeah. even belief comes comes and goes right like for example, if you go back to a toddler, right? It doesn't have a belief system that you know that that you know, so it just goes into a tantrum sometimes, mm. and then it goes into fits of laughter the next. Mm, mm. Yeah, there's goes into like, a tickle fight. Yeah, it's innocence, oh, right? It yeah, it's not going to say that. Um, I want to lose my tantrums. <laughs> mm. How do I drop this tantrum, mom? You know what I'm saying? It's <laughs> it's just what is. And if you look at a toddler, it gets hungry and it cries, right? When it's hungry. But when it's when it's um, you know, when you're playing with it, it 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 giggles. Yeah. It's not going to call <clears throat> it seeking, it's just hunger. Right. Yeah. It's just what is, right? So yeah. seeing through that lens of innocence, right? It's just everything that appears is it. And then we learn up we learn opposites, you know, saying in the story anyway, we learn that this is good and this is bad. And um, I should not tantrum anymore. And uh, so I should go to self-improvement. And then when you graduate from self-improvement, then you go into the no self-improvement. How do I drop the no so that I can improve? It's still self-agenda. It's a me agenda, me or no me. It's an agenda, right? So when you see that, there is no me behind that heaviness. So what's your agenda? <laughs> it's just it. Uh, okay, well, thank you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And that's, oh, I said, it's okay. It's, I mean, sometimes it's almost like I do not know what to trust anymore. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. I see that it's because I am looking for what is true or real. Maybe. Yeah. That's the thing, right? When there is, um, because the moment that you, <laughs> this is going to sound really horrible, right? The moment that you trust yourself. The moment that you think you know, the moment that you 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 know what's true and what is not true, then you will go keep on seeking because you're giving away now your seeming power, you know, seemingly others that you trust, right? And then it just becomes another position. Then all of a sudden you're in a cult. <laughs> Of belief systems. So yeah, so it's actually quite awesome when there's nothing to trust anymore. It's perfect. Then everything is just it. So even when you trust, you don't trust it. Even when you don't trust, you don't trust it. Perfect. <laughs> the problem is when you trust yourself too much, you know. Say. <laughs> Then someone is wrong and someone is right, right? And the wrong and right is just another play. Then it becomes something that that you believe, you know, and then that belief can 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 cause some pain and suffering, right? Because this is what I believe is true. This is what I trust. And that toddler becomes serious now and he gets stuck in tantrums, right? Because it wants it it. It's trying to control the narrative. So basically, it's an adult tantruming, <laughs> which is not which is not pretty, you know. What I'm saying? <laughs> but it's okay to that's also it. <laughs> yeah, the search for truth can can drive someone insane because there is no true or false. 
So it becomes almost like schizophrenic, right? It deludes that there's something true and it's deluded that there's something false. And it becomes a complete delusion. It's just a delusional kind of like appearance and everything. The delusion gets into a delusion, which is just, wow, right? So when the fantasy sees it's just a fantasy, then hooray, it's just what is. Or non-hooray, you know what I'm saying, is also it. And thus shall you view this whole seeming world, a star at dawn, a bubble in stream, a flickering lantern, a phantom, and a dream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just coming and going, coming and going, coming and going, coming and going. It's like, it's like the, the thoughts, like the train of thoughts coming and going, coming and going, coming and going. But what it overlooks is the simplicity of this appearance of nothing, seemingly pregnant with everything. It's beautiful appearance. It's like, it's it's well made. You know, it's like, wow. You know, <laughs> this illusion is perfect. I'm like, wow, what a show, what a party. Um, it's just what is. It's just it's just unbelievable, right? Unbelievable. It's so wild and free already, but not for you because it's wild and free. When it becomes about you, then it's, <laughs> what does it mean to see through the me? Is it the me just an idea? What's seeing through what? When it's seen, okay. When what is seeing is also what is, then it's just what is, then there's really no seeing. It's just what is. When what's longing is also what is, and then it's just longing. So the collapse of the me seeing a me it's just seeing. It's looking through, kind of like looking through the illusion that there's someone looking through. It's seeing through that there's no witness really or no observer. It's just seeing. But the idea, what we think is seeing is that there's a subject and object and that's, that's irrelevant. What's being looked at is also what is looking. So it's just really looking. So there's no me or no me involved. It's just looking. It's just seeing. It's just singing. It's just laughing. It's just crying. Tantruming. Doing cartwheels, right? It's just what is. It's like if you, if, if, if you look at nature and everything, it's just trees. Lakes. Waves coming and going, clouds moving, air coming and going, and there's stillness. Like the core of the earth does not move. And then there's also the inner core of the earth that moves. It's, it's wild, right? It's all of this moving and non-moving, real and unreal. So it's seemingly opposites, seemingly happening or non-happening. You know, it's just all appearances. But for no one. <laughs> That's what's wild, right? It's this great spectacle of a show, but there's no audience. There's an illusion that there's an audience, which is wild too. But yeah. Working in the business of healing, it seems that we are looking for the right recipe to heal wounds. For example, I sometimes, oh, sorry. I sometimes think that I am the one that has the right recipe and pretty confided about, confided about it too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's um, again, right? It's, it's a programming seemingly that 
I am right and you are wrong, or I am wrong or I am right. So as long as that there is a right and wrong kind of like narrative and everything, there's going to be some, some suffering because there's always going to appear as an opposite. But when there's a relinquishing, although there's no one relinquishing of right and wrong, then it's just right and wrong. It's just what appears, right or wrong. It's just what is, and that's that's so simple, right? So simple. And even if you think you're doing the right, when you see that there's no right and wrong in doing the right, it's just what is. So meaning that when, when, um, when it has nothing to do with you, it's just appearances. It's just appearances, yeah. It's just what is, so to speak, right? Do, do you see yourself as the tree, the ocean, the sky, the objects? I see the bird, the tree, the ocean, and then me seeing those things, not like I am them. You know what's really funny? When you're not thinking about it, this question doesn't matter. It's just, it's just what is, right? There's no separate tree. There's no sky. It's just this unbelievable absence and fullness appearing as trees, as objects, without any labels, it's, it's, there's no one seeing. There's no one witnessing. But there's this, this seemingly exquisite play of seeing and you know all that kind of stuff or smelling. And, but guess what? Even the senses, smelling, seeing, feeling, touching is also an illusion. And it's, it's, it's hard to think, right? Because you're like, well, that's a tree. Well, you just call it a tree. That's the ocean. You just called it an ocean. In the absence of ideas, in the absence of labels, is that really an ocean? Is that really a tree? Is that really you watching the tree? All of the character the individual had is a construct, an idea of what is. So when a construct falls apart, you're like, oh. what you think you, you've been missing is in front, is, is what's looking, is in everything. It's inescapable. Not as an experience, right? People are looking for that experience, right? But without the experience, it already is. There's just a thought that it's kind of like, there's just a thought that is like a, it's like, you know, it's like a, a thought app. Like it's like dating. It's like swiping left. And right. This is it. This is not it. This is it. <laughs> you know, like, like a Tinder app or something. <laughs> it's always a match. <laughs> it's always it. But I don't like that one. This one I like. I like that one. It doesn't matter what you think. It's always it. So the ocean, the bird, the sky. And the one watching the ocean, the bird, and the sky are labels of separation, of something that cannot be separated. So the oceans, the, the sky, and everything is nothing. It's also everything. And that's labeling it too much again. It's interesting that we can label one series of apparent events as one life and then labeling another set of apparent events as another life. Yeah. And that's what's, what's, what's also wild, right? It's because there are really no events. It just appears that there is this 
um, event that seems to be good event, bad event, you know, and, and then there's just a labeling of this event and this other event. Um, it's just another, it's, 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 um, it's like putting benchmarks and this is my favorite event. And I'm looking for, for the next event where I can be, um, you know, the best know me or <laughs> the most enlightened. And it, it seems to overlook what is already this eventlessness, this eternity. Because it's looking for the next eternity. It's looking for the next infinite. It's looking for the next now. It's looking for the for the uh, the dropping, the uh, the self realization, all that kind of stuff, right? So it's it's busy, 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 trying to um, trying to avoid what is already the case. But it can't avoid it. It can only avoid it in the imagination of thoughts. So all, although this is it, the character, the seeker, can will, will think that, well, this is not it. Well, this is not it is also it. Well, this is not it, it. And it just keeps on, <laughs> keeps on negotiating <laughs> something that's, so it keeps us swiping left and right, you know, like, no, no. <laughs> it's like, it's like dating when it's, it's already eternally married to it. Married to everything and nothing. It thinks it has a choice, but it's already matched. It's emptiness already, or it's or what you cannot call it. So what swiping and what's being swiped at is the same thing. So it doesn't matter what the imagination is. It, it's, it's no matter what the delusion or the fantasy is, it's always it. It's already it. Infinitely it, no matter what it is, no matter what it thinks, no matter what it does, no matter how it avoids it or accepts it. There's a trick, right? So when, when there's an acceptance of what's being said here, that's just another delusion. The moment that you say that I get it, it's okay. That passes. It's also it, by the way, but it's, it just becomes another comprehension. So it seems like we are uh, seeking for the truth here, but you're saying that there are no truth. Um, I didn't say that. What I'm just basically saying is that um, seeking for truth, truth, you know what? It, it's just another, um, it's just another opinion. So it's just basically, basically what you're looking for is your own opinions of what truth is. But opinion is just an opinion. And that seems to appear as the truth or no truth. It's just an opinion. It's just a position. So when it's seen that the opinion of truth or another appearance of truth is just another opinion. It's just a story. Yeah, it's not an idea. It's not an opinion. Although that appears to be just another opposite, right? It can keep on going the opposites, but it's easy. To, the spell of the opposite is easily broken when it's seen that the one that is trying to figure it out is an opposite. And every single opposite is a dream. The very thinking is an opposite. The very figuring out is an opposite. The one that's accepting or rejecting is an opposite, meaning it's an illusion. The one that believes or doubts is an opposite. The one that accepts or rejects is an opposite. It's a story. It's an illusion. It's, it's an opinion. The one that comes and goes is just an opposite. So it's just, it's, it's such a trap, right? Because it has nothing to do with you. <laughs> and that's the awesome thing. 
uh, so we don't have to get this. No one gets it. So Emerson is still seeking for restaurants? Yeah. They're, the character is also always going to be seeking, but there's also no character. It's just seemingly seeking for restaurants, for whatever, right? It's just what is. It's just labeling again, right? But there's also no character. That's the thing. There is this, there's this appearance of um, looking for the best cinnamon rolls. Right, but there's also no one looking for the cinnamon rolls. So that's the wildness thing because, because the moment that you get caught up and thinking that, oh, I'm still seeking, or I'm not seeking, it's just a narrative. Again, it's just another opposite, right? Seeking happens or no seeking happens, it's okay. Anything that can be said is just a happening, but it's also not happening. <laughs> not to be Woodley goes, not to be creepy, but I love everyone's faces. Likewise, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, it's the loveness of speaking about this too. Thank you. Well, although it cannot be said, what's being expressed here is just a flow of words and language of perceiving, assuming something that cannot be assumed or perceived. But yet there is this incredible isness that cannot be figured out. That's always this and not this. And um, we're going to take a little break. Um, I'm hungry now speaking about all that food. <laughs> so they're seeking for food here. <laughs> Love you guys. Thank you so much. We'll be back in about an hour. Um, and yes.